Good morning. Greeting to all of you gathered here today in this Reformation Sunday as a follower of Jesus. Uh, grace, mercy, peace to you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us as in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies and grant courage to your church, your saving peace through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who live and reign with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay. One of the things I have learned during my days in Robert Youth Camp is that people are always traveling. They move from place to place, and you have to always be prepared. But when I came here to Alaska back in 2011, uh, one of the unexpected things happened. We were having a Bible study at uh, Pastor Andy's his, uh, office. From what I experienced in Robert Youth Camp, I looked at the window, and there was rain and sunny at the same time. And what I know so far is that when you see that happening, the hyena is giving a birth. So when I tell it to my American friend, they say, well, there are no hyenas in Alaska, which is true, there are no hyenas here. So, that's a bummer. Anyway, today, uh, <laughs> today we are uh, talking about the courage. You know, uh, Many of us will not have to lay our life down. But that does not mean that we don't have a courage. Courage, the gift of doing the right thing, even when it is scary and hard. It resonates deeply with the original shape of our soul. But why is it so beautiful? To see someone to do the right thing instead of doing the same thing. It is a mystery, but it is pointing relentlessly to the nature and delight of the one who made me and you because it took courage for someone like me who been in refugees camp and cope with the difficult situation in the camps. Life was very harsh. Even today, I consider myself as one of the luckiest people because most of my friends either died or did not make it out of Sudan. In my humble background as a disposed commoner from that war-torn nation, especially in a political, volatile environment, uh, displacement can flare up like an earthquake. People can move from place anytime, anywhere, in any moment. Uh, but for others, Courage extends beyond this refugee's experience, such as troubled relationships, uh, financial challenges, and chronic illnesses. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the beauty and goodness for which we were fashioned by our Mecca is more glorious than we dare to imagine. When it comes to being brave, we should picture Jesus. We should picture Jesus, 
the power to fearlessly speak the truth, the freedom to selflessly love, the string to unflinching string oneself on the cross. This is the grace of God. But even now, he said before us, pass away to courage and boldness of the heart. The question is, how can we prepare ourselves to receive this grace? God does not always remove the source of our fear or difficulties, but he does work with us and will grant the courage we need to keep going. I have seen courage by having faith in Christ. I live most of my tender youth life in a long, staggering exodus that took me from one refugee camp to another in more than one country across the horn of Africa. And being displaced exposed, exposed my dear life and being displaced and exposed, my dear life was entirely dependent upon God. As you know, refugees are the victim of circumstances beyond their control. They have untold tales to tell the world. To say the very least, those are the chilling tales of the forced displacement, political violence, death, discrimination, emotional traumas, hopelessness, and protracted redundancy. Displaced or trapped in organized political brutalities, we are exposed to all kinds of physical violence, including rape, robbery, and human trafficking. But there is a good news. And there was also good news in the days of refugees camp. It says in Isaiah 58, God lays out the very compelling vision of what he offered to those who follow him in the pathway to courage. And it read like this. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteous will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, here am I. If you do away with the yoke of operation, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourself on the behalf of the anger and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will raise in the darkness. And your right will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in the sun scribed land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well watered garden, like a spring whose water never fails. Your people will rebuild ancient ruin and will raise up the age old foundation, you will be called a repairer of broken wall, a restorer of the street with the dwelling. And this is what brought us to this Matthew text today. Joseph was instructed by God via a dream. He had a vision, a clear vision from the Lord or what he was to do. And this vision, the dream, guided him and brought him clarity, conviction, and courage. Even when it was, even when it wasn't what society thought he should do. But because 
he had a clear understanding of what God wanted. The Lord's vision for his life, the opinion of those who are not in the loop, did not affect him at all. But, in, but it is my intent to show that Joseph put God his call above all other voices. He was in tune with what God had to say to him. He was in touch with God's vision for him. So what about us today? What about us here at ALC? Whose vision and voice are we tuned into? You see, God does not have, God does not have a clear, God, I mean, God does have a clear vision for your life. A call to obedience that he wants you to hear, to see, and to grasp. Are you listening to the Spirit? To reading the Word and to seek the Lord for what He wants out of your life. God, God's vision keeps you centered on the things that matter most. Eternal issue regarding our spiritual life. Pursue God's vision for your life. Get connected with his purpose and eternal goal. Then, with passion and courage, transfer those to the people around you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to challenge the norm and live boldly with God's vision as your, guide, as your compass and guide. See, Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, exemplified courage it takes to deal with a difficult situation and make a tough choice. Even in our text today, in the, in the, in the first chapter of Matthew 18 through 19, it says, in the birth of the in the in the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had, engaged, had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with a with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to the public, public disgrace planned to dismiss her quietly. After discovering Mary's pregnancy, Joseph decided to divorce her privately without exposing her to the public shame. But something was strikingly simple about Joseph. He was a, uh, he was Simple man with an extraordinary occupation and demanded attention to detail and focus. God was preparing him with every woodworking project to persevere in the process. He kept standing until the tree became a table. A task, though simple, resulted in a lasting impact. Joseph's simple approach, though, held the seed of the great courage. Jesus put it this way. Whoever is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. That's in Luke 16, 10. Put yourself in Joseph's shoes for a moment. He and Mary were not yet fully married. And suddenly, the announcement, and suddenly she announced a surprise pregnancy. 
Christ said Joseph is squarely between his eyes. But there was more. Mary explained, explained she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. How can you offer a reasonable explanation for that? The crisis intensified. I can picture Joseph overwhelmed by this news and terrified about what it will mean for him and his fiance in the culture born by laws and tradition. Certainly, his announcement would make would generate a tidal wave of trouble and rumors. But this ordinary man, Joseph, he faces a tough choice. And he was thinking how he would respond. The easiest solution for him would be to cover the problems quietly and move on. In their Jewish culture, an engagement was binding as a marriage. Though the expectant parent did not take vows, they were both bestowed or promised to marry to each other. A broken engagement would cause as my calamity as a divorce. Even in chapter 18, notice it says engagement, and without hesitation in chapter 19, it says divorce. Joseph had to wait his opinion. To stand in support of Mary would surely mean public humiliation and a scarlet letter of shame for both of them. To ignore her admission would be to cast a scarlet letter of disgrace on his beloved fiancé. He was torn by this news. But he was a courageous man. Being a righteous man, he truly wanted to do what is right and what God wants him to do. And that's what God wants all of us to do. We find ourselves living a very passive culture. However, as God people, we call to stand up for what God's love. As a believer, we call to love what God loves and hate what God hates. Joseph took the bold stand in this decision. He thought that divorcing Mary quietly would be the most loving action he could take in a given cultural context. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are named, and you are to name him Jesus. He will save his people from their sin. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. An angel of the, of, the, of the Lord appeared to him. So, Joseph was confronted with church, whether to slither away or to stand bold in light of all that was potentially humiliating and shameful. Joseph made his decision, and when he fell asleep, what died, considering all these things, His plan was mapped out secretly on tomorrow's thing to do list. He would divorce Mary quietly, and then everything would be okay. Joseph's eyes closed in his sleep, and then everything changed. In a dream, an angel visited him and spoke to him again. He spoke courage to him in his soul. Joseph suddenly faced with another challenging decision. This time, 
What should you do about the dream? Did it really happen? Was he crazy to think the angel, uh, the angel gave him those specific instructions? As a people, we often concern about left and right decision. Sometimes it may, it may be individual decision or a choice decision. Let's say here at a, ACL or ALC, uh, we have we always think about, okay, should we make decision of uh, sending our missionaries to Africa, to India, or to Shanghai? We also make decision about where we live. Should we live in this neighborhood or that neighborhood? About three weeks ago, if you remember, we also had a voters meeting. We, st we wrestled with the decision, should we get a senior pastor or should we keep the, in, the uh, intentional interim uh, pastor. So, decisions are part of our daily life. And they can easily get best of us, especially when our greatest concern is, is whether we should go left or we should go right. God's concern is usually about right or wrong in our life, not just left or right. For example, even myself, when I came here as an accompanied, accompanied minor, I was living with uh, eight mates. We, we lived together in an apartment complex, like two, one bedroom, two bedroom apartment that was rent by the Catholic Social Services. So I had to make a decision. Should I go to children Sunday morning, or should I go to where they wanted to go? Because they came here, they see life is better than where they were. There were so many exciting things that they have never seen before. So they wanted to go and do their own things. Uh, but I still have to make my decision. Should I follow my peers, or should I go to church Sunday morning? So decision is something that we deal with every day. Uh, in Joseph's case, we clearly see God at work. He was with Joseph in showing him exactly the path he should follow. So Joseph's decision to divorce Mary was a righteous decision according to the Jewish law. It was not the right decision. The point is, if we will concern ourselves with what is righteous, God will lead us to what is right. Joseph was doing the best a Jewish carpenter could do, given the circumstances, and God revealed the path we are still reading about today. The simple carpenter named Joseph heard from the angel and responded courageously. In uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 24 through 25, it says, When Joseph woke up again, but I will just read the chapter 24, because chapter 24 is something uh, amazing here. It says, When Joseph woke up from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife. Do you see, do you see chapter 24? Uh, I uh, mean, verse 24 here. It's simple to say, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded. He obeyed. But what makes this so incredible is that his actions were all sacrificial in nature. When the going get tough, Joseph gets uh, sacrifice, sacrificial. Do you see the text here? Say, took Mary home as his wife, and had no reunion with her. Joseph is a great example of someone who was very courageous and showed his courage throughout his sacrificial action. Therein lies the essence of, of courage. We exhibit it best when we sacrifice 
for others. Just like Joseph, let your obedience and courageous action find the root in sacrifice. So if you really want to be a God, this kind of man or a woman, then strive to be a man or a woman of courage. It may start today by your willingness to address difficult areas, hard, uh, make hard decisions, submit to God's vision, or admit your personal failure. Imagine Joseph waking up in the morning and being visited by an angel. He stares at the ceiling. He struggled to process what happened during the night. He had already made what he thought was a courageous decision to risk his reputation by divorcing Mary quietly. And now his thought were jumbled with a new perspective. His new thoughts were radical and seemingly dangerous, but Joseph accepted them with an overwhelming sense of peace. He suddenly knew the direction he should take. After making culturally righteous decisions, God led his servant Joseph to the right direction. With courage, he took action, marrying his expecting fiance by walking in his by walking in his God-given direction, Joseph found solid place to set his feet and his faith. Brothers and sisters, God gave all of us the gift of courage. Even in Joshua, it says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. Then you may be successful wherever you go. The name Jesus was a popular boy's name at that time. Being an Hebrew, the same as Joshua, who brought the Israelites into promised land after the death of Moses. But here in the, the text of, uh, in, the, in the books of Matthew, the Apostle Matthew sees Jesus as the one who will now complete what the law of Moses pointed to, but could not of itself produce. He will give you courage. He will rescue his people not from the slavery in Egypt, but from the slavery of sin. The exile they have suffered, not just in Babylon, but in their own heart and lives. The two names together express the meaning of this story. God is present with his people. He does not intervene from a distance, but is always active. Sometime in most unexpected ways. And God is action aimed at rescuing people from hopelessness. Demanding that he take the initiative to do things people are regarded as inconceivable. This is a God. This is Jesus. This uh, whose story in Matthew 